right guys, so by now you should have your whole project drawn out and we're going to start coloring. All right, so you can use two different types of color schemes. You can use primary colors or you can use secondary colors. Now there's just one quick thing. We are gonna be making dots on ours. So with secondary colors, it doesn't really matter. But with primary colors, you have to plan yours out to where your dots are not done in yellow, okay? Um, you just don't see them. So either your word needs to be yellow or this zigzag needs to be yellow. It's gonna be one of the two. Um, so that's just gonna kinda be up to you. Uh, you can also have yellow just on the outside as well and then have this rotate between red and blue. But just understand that don't do your dots in yellow, okay? Because you'll never see them. All right, so I'm actually going to use my secondary colors, which are green, orange, and purple. And I'm gonna do my zip in purple, because I love the color purple. And I'm gonna do this zigzag in orange. So when you color these, now you're gonna have some spaces where it catches because of the newspaper, okay? So it's gonna be really important that you color the proper way. So the first thing you wanna do is you wanna do an inside outline all the way around your letter like this. And then you're gonna color one direction, okay? So I'm just gonna go up and down like so. And I'm just gonna work my way and I'm using the side of my marker. I'm not using the tip of my marker because of my lines would be super thin. So I'm gonna go all the way down like this. Now, if you have a space that doesn't get colored, for example, like right here, you're gonna have to go back and you might have to go a different direction. But as long as you're going one direction, it's gonna look so much better. And then you're, I'm gonna finish coloring these two. Okay, so I finished my letters. Now I'm gonna work on this zigzag. Now this kind of gets tricky for some kids. So it's really important to understand that the interior part of the zigzag, this stays newspaper. So see, it looks like this. You keep that as the newspaper. So I'm going to color the in between the zigzag. Now this is gonna take some effort and some time. Okay, you're gonna go around, you're gonna still do an inside outline. And this is gonna save you from messing up also and coloring the wrong space. So I'm gonna go on the inside of this and I'm gonna outline the whole thing. And you can do it in sections if you want. But I'm, gonna, I'm going to go on top of this other zigzag. So it's on the bottom of this one and on the top of this one, it's the inside outline. And then you really want to focus on still coloring the same direction the whole way. So let me finish outlining this and I'll show you what I mean. Okay, so I'm done inside outlining and then I'm going to color this in. And again, you really wanna stick the same direction for coloring, so this, I'm just gonna go up and down. And you're, you know, I'm coloring from the top down like this, and I'm going all the way around, even when it goes a different way. And um, you're just gonna keep going the same direction the whole way, even when you get to these bigger spaces. Okay, and you're gonna color this in solid all the way around. All right, next we're gonna move on to the outside part. We're gonna save this puff part for last. And I'm gonna do mine in um, purple and green. So I'm gonna have my background mostly as green. So I have like these V's, remember that we drew, I'm gonna save those and those are gonna be purple. So I'm gonna do my other sections green. And again, take your time, do an inside outline. I cannot emphasize that enough. I promise you, it seems like it takes more time, but in the long run, it's gonna save you time and it looks so much nicer. So I'm gonna do that one green. I'm gonna skip this one, just kind of every other one. And then when you move on to the other side of your paper, it's gonna be really 
um, important that you color the correct space. So I'm leaving my V, like these little tapered sections, as purple. So when I move to the other side of my paper, you know, it doesn't continue because it goes off the page. So I have to just sit there and go, okay, what's here's my taper section. So this portion is going to be green. And so would, you know, this portion over here because it's not a tapered area either. Okay. And then once you figure that out, you'll color your whole um, background. The other thing is, is to be really cautious about where your hand is sitting because if your hand sits on this wet marker, it's going to pick up and then travel with you on your other um, paper so it can pick up the ink on your hand. So just make sure that your hand's not sitting on top of wet, wet marker. All right, and then once I'm done with all of my one color, my green, I'm gonna go back and color in all these tapered sections too. All right, and then we have one last thing to do, and this one definitely is the most tedious, but the most important is to make sure that these look like they're printed. So we're gonna add dots to this, and when you add dots, you wanna add them as close to lines as you can Okay, now I'm not sitting there saying we're perfect, but what you don't want to do is you don't want to sit there and have like these crazy sporadic lines because what ha dots is because what happens is it makes these weird extra lines going off. You guys get in a rush and you're like, oh, it's fine. And or you have a whole bunch together in one space. So we're gonna take the time and we're gonna dot in lines. And even though it seems again, like it's taking longer in the long run, it's gonna be faster because you're not having to go back in and fill in these extra sections that you missed or have these weird spaces that you have to recover with newspaper because it doesn't look good. Okay, so when you work on your dots, just pick a space. I'm just gonna start over here. And I always like to dot towards me. So I'm gonna just start right here and I'm just gonna do some dots, try to keep them as consistent as I can. And when you just kind of lift and move your hand, it's gonna be pretty consistent. Now I'm not sitting there saying that those need to line up or anything like that, but just you know try to keep them in rows and as neat as you can. And you're just gonna go, you know, up and down this and take your time and like really push down and lift up your marker so that way you have just consistent dots. The other thing that you don't wanna do is you don't wanna make big dots like this, okay? You're just pushing down, lifting, push, lift, push, lift, push, lift, and they'll all be pretty close to the same size. So you're gonna do that on this little puff cloud you have around your word, okay? all the way around this whole thing you'll, and you'll finish filling it in. All right, so I hope you enjoyed your onomatopoeia pop art. Here's that one, whether you did secondary colors or primary colors. All right, so that's it. Please make sure that you guys are coloring neatly and doing your dots neatly. It's gonna make or break your piece. I look forward to seeing the finished products.